Oh, the senator from Vermont. Uh, Madam President, I wanted to rise to say a few words about the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act, uh, which we are debating today. Uh, I think that the thrust of that act and what we are trying to accomplish is enormously important. Uh, right now, as I think most people know, we have a crisis in terms of microchip production here in the United States, and we are becoming increasingly dependent upon countries all over the world, and both for our own uh, manufacturing sector, the automobile sector, uh, the electronics sector, uh, that is a very bad position to be in. And also, obviously, being dependent on other countries for microchips is a dangerous place to be in terms of national security. Uh, I especially like provisions in this legislation which will increase funding for research and development, uh, increase funding for science and technology, uh, and invest in more PhDs. The need for more PhDs in our country in science, technology, engineering, and math. I think those are very important steps uh, in the right direction. Uh, but I do have some very serious concerns about two provisions in this bill. Uh, number one, uh, I am deeply concerned uh, about the provisions which will provide $52 billion in emergency appropriations for the microchip industry with no strings attached. So let me repeat that. We're talking about $52 billion in federal funds. And by the way, I suspect there will be more taxpayer money coming to these corporations from state and local government with no strings attached. And second of all, there is a provision uh, in this bill, not an appropriation, but an authorization to provide uh, some $10 billion uh, to uh, the Blue Origin uh, Space uh, Company, which is owned by the wealthiest person uh, in the world, uh, Mr. Bezos. Um, when we talk about the microchip industry, we are talking about an industry that is not a poor, struggling industry. In fact, it is an extremely successful and wealthy industry that is worth now more than half a trillion dollars, more than $500 billion. We are talking about an industry, interestingly enough, that at the same time we are now trying to provide corporate welfare to them, this is an industry that has shut down over 780 manufacturing plants in the United States over the past several decades and laid off 150,000 American workers. So what you have is a situation is that over the last two decades, these very large corporations said, why do I want to stay in the United States of America, pay workers here a living wage, protect environmental standards. I can go to companies in Asia and elsewhere and buy my products from them. The result, again, 780 manufacturing plants in the last several decades shut down in America and 150,000 American workers laid off. Now, let's talk about, we don't know exactly, nobody does, where this $52 billion in corporate welfare is going to go. But obviously, it will go to some of the larger microchip uh, companies. And one of the very largest is Intel. And let me say a word about Intel. Last year, Intel made nearly $21 billion in profit. So we are proposing to provide many billions of dollars to a company that last year made $21 billion in profits. They spent $14.2 billion on stock buybacks. 
$14.2 billion on stock buybacks. And by the way, this company, which is in line for a major infusion of U.S. taxpayer money, provided a $110 million signing bonus to its CEO, Patrick Gelsinger. Since 2015, this very same company, Intel, has shipped over 1,000 jobs overseas. Now, interestingly enough, uh, Intel's CEO has admitted recently that it does not need corporate welfare, and let's give them credit for that. Uh, the CEO recently said, and I quote, uh, his investment in America does not depend on a penny of government support or state support or any other investments to make it successful and never will. End of quote. They're prepared to do it on their own, which is what we hope most private corporations uh, would do. Now, among the other very large uh, leading microchip companies is uh, the well-known Texas Instruments. And they may well be in line uh, to receive billions of dollars in corporate welfare as well under this uh, piece of legislation. Last year, Texas Instruments made $5.6 billion in profits and spent $2.5 billion buying back its own stock uh, while it has outsourced thousands of jobs to low-wage countries. The CEO of Texas Instruments made over $30 million in total compensation last year, more than 400 times uh, as to what the median worker at that company made. And this is also another company in line to receive billions and billions of dollars in federal corporate welfare. Who else might receive corporate welfare under this bill? Well, how about the major uh, semiconductor company from Taiwan called the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TS, often referred to as TSMC, uh, which is a very, very, very large uh, microchip company. Uh, and it is interesting to note who uh, is the largest shareholder uh, in that company. Well, uh, it should not surprise anybody because this is how countries around the world do industrial, pro uh, do industrial policy. But the largest uh, shareholder in TSMC is the government of Taiwan. So when you give TSMC money, you're giving that money directly to the government of Taiwan. Samsung, another very large corporate entity, is South Korean, uh, and it owns several plants in Texas. Uh, Global Foundations, Go Global Foundries, I'm sorry, is a wholly owned subsidiary, subsidiary of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, so what we are looking at here uh, is uh, a reality where taxpayer money from working people in this country uh, will be going to large, profitable corporations, uh, and several of them are owned, literally, by other uh, entities. Uh, in total, Mr. Pre Madam President, the top five semiconductor companies uh, that will receive grants, that may well receive grants under this legislation, made nearly $35 billion in profits and spent more than $18 billion of buying back its own stock last year. So here is the bottom line. I believe that we do want to grow the microchip industry uh, here in the United States of America for reasons that everybody is familiar with. That is, uh, that is the industry that we need if we're going to grow the automobile industry, the electronics industry, and every other industry uh, in this country. And we need to uh, not be dependent upon China or other countries for the microchips that are used uh, in these products. So I am sympathetic to the goal of this bill, uh, but I am not sympathetic with the idea of simply 
laying out uh, $52 billion of taxpayers' money with no strings attached. Uh, and that is why I have introduced Senate Amendment uh, 1924. And this amendment would prevent microchip companies from receiving taxpayer assistance unless they agree to issue warrants to the federal government. If private companies are going to benefit from over $52 billion in taxpayer subsidies, the financial gains made by these companies must be shared with the American people, <coughs> not just wealthy shareholders. In other words, Madam President, uh, all this uh, amendment says is that if these companies want taxpayer assistance, we are not going to socialize all of the risks and privatize all of the profits. And uh, let me be very clear, this is not a radical idea. Uh, this is not something that I made up or any other senator made up. These exact conditions were imposed on corporations that received taxpayer assistance in the Bipartisan CARES Act, which passed the Senate 96 to 0. In other words, every member of the United States Senate has already voted for the conditions that is in the amendment that I co-sponsored by Senator Warren, by the way, uh, that, that is in the provisions that we, the amendment that we are offering. Uh, further, Madam President, this amendment would also require companies, again, all of this was in the CARES Act. Every member, or at least 96 members of the Senate, voted for these conditions. Not a new idea. So in addition to making sure that uh, companies allow for warrants, uh, they would be uh, demanded that they could not buy back their own stock, uh, not outsource American jobs overseas, not repeal existing collective bargaining agreements, and remain neutral in any union organizing effort. Again, these are not new ideas, not radical ideas. All of these conditions are identical to the conditions that were, pla that were placed in the CARES Act, which passed 96 to nothing. Uh, Madam President, uh, I also want to say a word on the uh, provision in there that would give uh, some 10, authorizes $10 billion for Blue Origins, a company owned by uh, Mr. Bezos. You know, when we were younger and Neil Armstrong made it to the moon, there was incredible joy and pride in this country that the United States of America did something that people forever had thought was impossible. We sent a man to the moon. An extraordinary accomplishment, and the entire world watched that event with bated breath. Just an extraordinary accomplishment for all of humanity, not just the United States, but we had a special pride because that was our project. And I worry very much that what we're seeing now is two of the wealthiest people in this country, Mr. Musk, Elon Musk, and Mr. Bezos deciding that they are going to take control over our space efforts to do, uh, to, to get to uh, the moon and maybe even the extraordinary accomplishment of getting to Mars and what an accomplishment that would be. But I have to tell you that I have a real problem, that to a significant degree we are privatizing that effort so that as a nation, we will not sit with pride in saying, we did it, but instead say, well, you know, maybe Mr. Bezos or, or maybe Mr. Musk uh, sent somebody to the moon or even to Mars. This is something that should be an American effort that all of us should be part of and not simply be uh, a uh, private corporation uh, undertaking. So I got a real problem with the authorization of 
ten billion dollars uh, going to somebody who, among other things, is the wealthiest uh, person in this country. So, uh, Madam President, what I hope very much is that my amendment will be a part of the manager's amendment. Uh, I suspect there are Republicans who, uh, who often tell us about wanting to save taxpayers' dollars and not just throw them about, who would be sympathetic to this effort. And then I know there are a number of Democrats who are as well. So I would hope very much uh, that my amendment, uh, 1924, uh, which will be modified to just include provisions that were in the CARES bill, uh, that it will be included uh, in the manager's amendment that we will be voting on shortly. Uh, and with that, uh, Madam Chair, I um, uh, leave, leave the microphone.